the reason for this podcast. I think right. uh, the reason why you know we're getting together to do this is you know to really demystify this whole right. entertainment industry for people. Welcome to the first episode of the Art Department podcast. Um, we are the co-hosts here. We have Emmanuel Shu and uh, Jan Urschel here. And this is the first episode. And I think we wanted to give you a bit of a rundown of um, who we are, why we're doing this, what we're trying to do with this podcast. And um, I think we should just jump right into it. So yeah, do, you wanna, do, it. do you want to start? Or? Sure, sure. I'll, I'll start. So I'm Emmanuel Shu. So I'm that part of it. Uh, and I am an illustrator now in the union doing mostly live action film, but background, uh, comes from, uh, photography, uh, art school. Uh, then, you know, I did everything from, uh, games, uh, animatics, uh, modeling, texturing, uh, I, and then matte painting and then visual you know visual effects matte painting and then concept art visual effects concept art and then concept art damn that's so that's lot. yeah that's really uh, but that spans over 20 years so hopefully that experience can come in handy here uh to help you guys but I should, uh i think it will that's yeah that's my that's my overall background i mean and now i'm in live action mostly right right but so what was the first project you 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 got like the first you, project was uh, did you jump on something right out of school or yeah well I mean you know it's funny because you know I graduated from school and then went to the counselor and said hey I need a job and then it just <laughs> so happened at that time you know I don't know if you remember the multimedia time right it was just multimedia was becoming a thing oh uh, so yeah CD-ROM games yeah, and yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah. of I mean at that time the CD-ROM had just come out a, a writable CD-ROM, and and so I went. This game studio needed somebody, and then I was like, okay. I went and interviewed with three floppy disks. Oh my god! That was my portfolio. Three floppy disks. I think I think the kids and, watching this video they don't even know what CD-ROMs are anymore. Yeah, yeah, they don't know. Yeah, look look, look that up. <laughs> but basically, you know, three floppy disks uh, went in there, and then. Um, the, the saving grace was that uh, the owner of the place was, uh, he was a race car designer. And I happened to be, at that time, a race car driver. Oh, so okay. So we had a perfect sort of, we just started talking and then, and then we hit it off. And, you know, my work was like really weak. I mean, it was just, I barely knew the software. I, <laughs> I bought a computer and I was just... I, I had no manual. I just kind of had this cracked version of the software like 20 some years ago. And I just kind of went in there and tried to learn it, you know, and and I but I did enough to get the job. And it was really lucky as a first job. It was a game um, for, uh, for like civil, civil War battleships. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the owners of the place was Ron Cobb. Oh, my so, God. I, I don't know if you guys know who Ron Cobb is, but he's. You know, he designed for Star Wars, uh, Aliens. He did. He does a lot of Abyss. He does a lot of uh, more realistic designs. Yeah. Uh, wow. And and he was the boss. And he taught me sort of painting. Wow. You know, he would paint <laughs> pixel by pixel. That's how he painted back then. Jesus. So it, you know, it was amazing. I met Brian Flora, uh, Matt Painter. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked there as well. So it was. It was insane, uh, and and most of the people working there I still talk to now. Amazing. And this is twenty something years ago. Yeah. So yeah, that was my first job. What about you? Um, yeah, I've I've had a I've had a weird weird career, if you even want to call it that. I've jumped around um, a lot, and um, I, I I didn't have that I didn't have that um, childhood growing up and drawing all the time. I mean, I drew stuff in my in my math books and whatever um nobody liked that least of all the teachers but i didn't have that like calling to be an artist and even even when i finished high school i i was i got a camera from my dad and i was just taking pictures here and there and i thought i was amazing but um 
when I failed the entrance exam for like a photography school, um, I, what, I guess what, was this high school or college? That was, so high school, high school, high school, high school, like art high school. No, just a general high school, just anything. It, actually, the focus of the high school was like in the in the natural sciences. So and that was actually what I was worst at, like like physics, chemistry. I was terrible at it and was like, why am I at oh, this same high school? Here, same here. <laughs> so um, but anyway, I made it barely out of there. And um, because I really had no interest in anything else um, except for taking pictures and watching a whole lot of anime, um, I, I yeah, I, I thought, hey, I'll, I'll be a I'll be a photographer. Let's let's give it a shot. And of course, I failed the entrance exam because I. I, I sucked. Um, the entrance exam to the college. To the to the photography college it was what it was like a photography oh, okay, okay. art college. So you're like me. I went to art. I applied to art center, uh, photography. Okay. So same. Oh, I mean, I got okay. in. Yeah, but, <laughs> that's the difference. I mean, that's the main difference here. Well, no, no. I mean. So I got. Yeah. I think. I think I got maybe discouraged a bit that maybe, um, the the i don't know the arts or whatever is not not my calling or whatever um because i think a big big uh, be, i was still a big believer uh, like in like talent right like you had the talent to to do this mm -hmm. or not there was no like hard work or anything um it's just either you can do it or you can't you pick up a camera and you're instantly famous mm -hmm. um but without the internet i mean nobody tells you can tell you otherwise right um and so I was like, okay, let's go, let's go the next step down, which was like watching anime, which was all in Japanese. So I was like, yeah, I want to, I want to learn Japanese, right? Um, so oh, okay. I actually went to, to university and applied. I mean, you, you don't, you don't have to apply for something like Japanese because there's barely enough people to fill a course. Um, so I went to study Japanese and it stuck for the next five years. Um, and I, so that, that's what you graduated? Yeah, Japanese? I have, I have a master's degree in Japanese. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And this is in Germany. That's in Germany, and uh, partially also in in Japan. So I I lived in Osaka for a year, um, and then I uh, was about six months in Hong Kong to work on my uh, thesis, which was about um, like basically um, wartime propaganda and um, stuff of what Japan did to the colonies in in Taiwan and Hong Kong. So what was your major like? Japanese, Japanese studies. Japanese, yeah. So not just the language, but yeah, the yeah, culture yeah, exactly. As well. Culture, oh, wow. uh, economy, so, social studies, everything. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, so um, it feels like a different. Do you still language. speak Japanese? Um, I used to be fairly okay, but now uh, because I don't speak it, I don't, I don't read it, I don't write it. It, I, I suck. My characters are just like. I can. F but you could probably get around in Japan. Yeah, right? I can. I can. I can get along. So when when like uh, when, we, when we go for, I still go to holiday once a once a year at least. Uh, I try to if there's no viruses or other stuff, um, and uh, I still get by. I still watch Japanese TV shows. Um, I still like the the culture and the the food and everything very much. And I made a lot yeah, of awesome. lifelong friends um, back then that I'm still in contact with. Um, but actually, at the same time where I was. I think uh, I cracked that same software you did 20 years ago. And um, I was actually uh, just because of some friends getting into web design. So my, my dad was ki kind of like very techy. So he, he would have like he like he would have um, latest computer, like, I don't know, three, three, what is it? 486 or whatever it's called, um, that kind of stuff. And, and he, he always had the latest and he always was one of the first to get Internet um, in our area in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, the dial up 56.6 yeah. uh, thing. No, I was 28. Remember 28K? Oh, 28K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, actually 14, 14 I think 14 I think and it, then 28 and then 56. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, so we had like had an email address and I was using Microsoft front page with a friend to like design oh, our, yeah, design our websites yeah. and yeah, yeah, it was yeah, horrible. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, that actually got me a job. So while other people in university were waiting tables, I was actually, well, I, I can't, I can't call it design. It would be, it would be a lie. But I mean, it, it was actually, I was earning money with designing stuff well, at right? that time the, the 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 website stuff was was got blowing up yeah exactly so that i i got into a i got into a job shortly before the dot-com bust um luckily that company um 
survived that and I was actually in a I, I worked in a marketing digital marketing agency in Munich for I think um, eight nine years then um, all through college um, actually before college I worked I worked while I was in high school there I don't know I don't know if that's even legally allowed I have no idea um, then throughout college and even after I worked there um, as a graphic designer and then also as a 3d artist um, I was my 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 boss at that so time. So how did the 3D artist start happening? I mean, so you just kind of learned it. My boss got into he thought the next big thing was going to be Second Life. I don't know, do you know Second Life? It's basically like an online 3D meeting space. It's kind of like a precursor to I don't even know what's a precursor to. It's like I think it's just a failed social experiment. Just imagine yeah. it's Facebook just in 3D. Okay, okay. And then everybody can just build their stuff and, and uh, contribute and upload, and then it's, it's there for everybody to enjoy. And then you get all sorts of well, the, the usual weirdos you have in the internet, right? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's all in 3D, so we need to build 3D. So I, I, we started using SketchUp, um, and it, it has also, like, you can either use the building blocks inside the editor in Second Life, it has its own editor, or you yeah. um, export like OBJs or whatever that you made and then you yeah. can upload that, but the, the upload didn't really work, it looked like shit. But anyway, so we got on that and um, yeah, we started building stuff like crazy and it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, so that was like kind of my, my first exposure into like uh, 3D. Um, and at that time I was doing a lot more like um, not only web design, but also like marketing flyers, materials. Mm -hmm. other, but other this stuff. is still your first job, right? It's still my first job, which yeah, yeah, lasted yeah. Okay. really long. But I think in the end, it, while maybe it was not like, I, I see it as my school. Like, because I didn't go to design school um, until much, much, much later. And I only went to design school in Singapore and that was like, kind of like a crash course. Um, so you so okay so then you went from that yeah <laughs> to actually no to I, Singapore yeah so um, now <laughs> now it gets into a, now it gets into a personal history where while I was in Japan in two thousand and five um, I met my then girlfriend now wife um, there and she had a job in Hong Kong shortly after so that's why I also conveniently located my thesis in Hong Kong. Um, at the Hong Kong University and um, and then then she got a job like by the time I was graduating I finished my thesis she, I was supposed to go to Hong Kong but then she got a job off in Singapore so I was like Hong Kong mm -hmm. Singapore doesn't really matter so I'll just I'll just go mm -hmm. to Singapore I had no idea never been there I've never read anything mm -hmm. was like hey it should be fun sun shines all the time palm yeah, yeah, trees yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. so yeah. and I, I arrived and I mean I had no idea I had a degree that I knew I wasn't going to find a job with Japanese. So the only thing I had to fall back to was, was um, design, graphic design. So and mm. it, it just happened to be that um, my, the, the boss of my wife, uh, he, he threw a garden party or whatever. And, and I just came along and then he's like, hey, so what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm a graphic designer looking for a job. And he's like, hey, we need a website. Like, why don't you come in on Monday? So I just came mm. on Monday Good and thing. had a job and I worked, um, funny enough, worked with my wife in the same company for like two years. Um, but by that time I was into my 10th year as a graphic designer and I was like, it's kind of, kind of getting boring. And, um, I knew I always had that, that, that love for like entertainment stuff for like, I watched like crazy amount of movies played video games and i think similar to other people who get who really get gets captivated by these kind of products is like so how do you how do you do that there must be something like there must be something like there must be people mm, yeah, yeah, making yeah. that stuff and i think that was around the time that the making offs from the dvds were um came out more and i think uh, the, the early Norman dvds came out of uh, and the, yeah, the, the yeah, early yeah. stages of design studio press right um mm -hmm. and it was like okay okay so this is all like like there's something like right because I, I was in the design field i liked creating stuff and i knew that 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 was what most interested me i was not interested in like 
um, like only like 3D or like um, matte painting or all that kind of stuff later on or writing or anything, right? It was for me always first and foremost like a visual, visual thing, mm -hmm. creating something new. Um, and that somehow coincidentally um, a, a new school opened in Singapore um, just, um, just a few months ago and um, I thought like yeah it's crazy expensive but uh I'll, I'll i'll should give it a go before i'm too old this and this was, that was at, uh, F Fangs, yeah F fzd was that in singapore yeah. right because i mean i i was uh i, I played i watched his uh no man I, I think i watched everything right, I right, could right, right. at that time yeah and i had no idea i was yeah. like watching like dylan, dylan cole make matte paintings and i'm like what like yeah like, i was trying yeah. to do the same it was like it's, it's not working like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so then, okay, so you, yeah. so you, then you, you went, just enrolled. And yeah, yeah, there. I just enrolled, and 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 back then, honestly, I think they were just happy to have anyone, because um, they just started. Yeah, right? they just yeah. started out, so they needed, yeah, yeah, they yeah. needed fodder, right? So, um, and I enrolled there, and then, um, I tried to get, tried to go in because it was, it was just a year, it was just a crash course, really. I tried to get in as, how do I say, like as uh, un untainted by anything else I learned before as possible. I mean, I never learned like color theory or anything, right? Like the, the job was kind of like how I just made up my stuff um, doing graphic design. And and so I tried to forget everything and try to, to take in as much as he taught us there. And I think that was great in the beginning, but later on I actually realized that I do know a lot of things that the younger ones don't know. So in the in the end, um, I think it was very helpful that I had this ten years prior experience of just what it means to work, right? D mm -hmm. Deliver to deadlines, deliver to clients, talk to your bosses, talk to your clients, grind through stuff that you don't like but that needs to get done, and working on on deadlines and just being on time, right? All these kind of little things here and there yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people who go to art school with 18 don't know and never never experienced and expect that yeah. you get you get given a, a pen uh, and a tablet and and you just like okay now be free and express yourself right i mm -hmm. never had any sort of illusion that that was how it worked um so i think all these two things or these all these experiences kind of kind of went went together nicely um and mm. ended up that uh, i got hired right out of um school um, to work at uh, Lucasfilm here in Singapore. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and first job. That's, so that's your first the, job the, in the, the industry. The first industry job, yeah. And then, um, unfortunately... On the, what? Um, the, the games division. So I mm, worked okay. on... Which was actually funny that um, I was... Like, usually what happens is that people in studios get... Like, they work on... They get... Like, the artists get a project assigned. And then you work on that until you... are either too tired or like uh, the project is finished. But I was mm -hmm. like, that's no fun. So after like three months on like a mobile game, I was like, can I work on something else now, please? So <laughs> I started working. They actually they actually said like, oh yeah, sure, right? They had no problem. Um, and uh, so I worked on a, on a 3D shooter. Um, all of these games got all canceled. It was also very mm -hmm. harsh. For the first two years, everything I worked on got canceled. Um, very fun experience indeed um and then i worked on uh, 1313 um which was kind of like the Ooh. boba fett was, precursor was it their last game um it was the last 13? game that lucas arts still lucas arts on. put out yeah. yeah and then they got because i i actually that was my second job i worked at lucas learning ah interesting uh, which was right physically next door to lucas arts right. and then after that i went to work at lucas film mm, okay um on episode one but so it's funny we're all around yeah, that when, well i mean what lucas arts at that time was working on yeah. full throttle exactly so they were still going so it was really <laughs> funny because it, it lucasfilm is like a really big family and you meet people again and oh, yeah. again um mm -hmm. and it, it yeah. was interesting because uh, at some point they realized okay 13 13 doesn't work um mm -hmm. and it, it 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 kind of went through many incarnate i don't know i don't know if i can even say that Probably should not talk about that in too much detail, but it, it, at some point Christian Altman was was uh, hired, uh, pulled over from uh, the the, mm -hmm. the movie division, and then he was my art director. So that was like oh, okay. holy shit, amazing. 
um right, even right. i knew who on he your was first job, on, my, on, on, on the first job that was amazing and then um it kind of bounced back and like it, then that ceased to be because of the mouse and um, then i jumped to ubisoft and mm. ended up freelancing so and that that's what i've been doing um i've, I've actually freelanced um, a bit before kind of like as and when a job came in um and then through some coincidence i met you i don't know why i don't know how but i think we yeah, were working on on a samsung commercial i think yes i think so and, yes and, and that was that was it um the galaxy yeah thing. the galaxy yeah. 11 right yeah. My gosh! Is, that, is it? Is it? That they actually ago? made it, and it was like, yeah. "What?" <laughs> the, the, the game, the, the game, the, the, they actually made a thing out of it. It was funny because yeah, I yeah. was like, "Yeah, it was. It was a really interesting, interesting project." I don't know how there was a psyop. I don't. I don't even know how they found it. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was, and that was, and now the rest is history, as as I'd like to say. But yeah. Um, that's how it goes, and I've 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 never stopped freelancing since then. But I mean, you are already you you're already way ahead of me back then. Well, I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've the reason for this podcast. I think right. uh, the reason why you know we're getting together to do this is you know to really demystify this whole right. entertainment industry for people, so that it's not it's not this thing that you have to kind of try to navigate and not understand what it is mm. because back then when we were mm. doing it especially when i was doing it there was no road right you know you want to find out there was when i started working there was barely internet right so you know downloading a jpeg took like <laughs> minutes exactly and, I, and and you know now it's like movies take not even take a minute it's streaming exactly but, you know, for me, I, I had no information. I didn't know how to get started. I got lucky. It really is yeah. all it is. I mean, I got lucky and I just said, okay. Uh, and I think we were talking and just just want to make make it easier for people to navigate. Now there's so much information. Yeah, exactly. It's the opposite. You, you don't know what to, you know, I've talked to so many potential students, so many potential people who are interested that they they don't know where to look they're so intimidated exactly. and then you know so i give them recommendations because i always watch a lot of these things i think we're the same mm. right we know kind of okay who's saying what mm. and can point people in the right direction so we have a lot i think to say i hope you know? i hope yeah. i hope so i hope people uh, agree on that yeah it's uh, like you said right it's based on our experience that for me it's like i it took me really long to make the connection between um, okay, this is this is something people make, and this is something I can help make, right? And and, and now it's like okay, but there's so much information. Like, um, and who do I listen to, right? I mean, I'm not saying that people should listen to us exclusively, right? But at least we will try to to sort through this entire mess that is out there, um, whether it be um, things related to like like so how what 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 do I do with my portfolio, like? how do I make one? Where do I bring it to? What, what should I, should I learn yeah. the latest software? Like what other skills are important besides being a good artist? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. How, how do, because how, do I, how am I a good person? Right. How am I easy to work? Oh with? yeah. All that matters right. too. And, and it's one of those things where, uh, it's, it's not, I mean, it's, it's our opinion. Mm. Uh, and, and there, there will be times when, you know, this is why we're doing it together because we, you know, we'll challenge each other. There, there will be differences in opinions, and that's great. Uh, and everybody is, you know, sort of encouraged to, you know, take the information and and make something of it. Uh, do your own research. But uh, what we about what we want to do is to give back from the knowledge that we've gained in a place that's sort of no bullshit and very clear. Exactly. At least this is how we see it, right? And then you can, you know, go and take that information and do what you need to it. But we will have, um, we're planning a lot of different episodes, you know, like you said, all the way from explaining the industry yeah. uh, to software because, yeah, I mean, you can, you, you have been doing a lot of the gum roads lately. Exactly. Uh, and, and, you know, just 
what have you been doing? Tell you can tell them <laughs> how you've been using that. Yeah. yeah so I mean, the the idea came from that. Um, I think you mentioned it before that when you when you started, there was no road, there was no way of, of doing things, right? And as much I feel like as it looks like now, it's like okay, you go to like a entertainment design focused school like art center and then you do that for three years or four years and then you end up in a good studio and then you're like made right and and that's the main road you should take um, to to be a concept artist or whatever i think that that maybe was briefly there but i think it it, it already eroded and um i feel we're almost back to like like so what do i do like how do i get in there right but again there's no one road um to do it and um where was i <laughs> that's my train of thought um no no i mean I, so mainly it's just like about the the you know how did you evolve into exactly the right numbers? so um because I, I had a really random way of getting into into the industry mm -hmm. um and I, I i felt like i'm always like um there's not only the one thing i want to do um, so after I've done the, the jobs in the studio, I was kind of like, okay, that was a fun experience, but what else? Mm -hmm. So I went into freelance and I mean, to a certain degree, freelance, freelancing is not any different than you know, working in a studio. It's just that your clients are slightly like physically removed from your place of work. Um, but yeah. in the end, it's still very much the same kind of work you do. And, and I kind of, not not that I want to say um, I got bored of it, um, but again, I asked myself after a few years, so what's next, right? And mm. then I naturally kind of got approached by um, a few schools here in Singapore as well. Um, so I started teaching little courses and one-off classes in Singapore. Then I actually got approached by a school in, in, in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. So I taught their physical classes as well. Um, so that's where you started teaching more, right? Yeah. So I dabbled and here and there. Getting a taste of it. Yeah, exactly. But it started very. It, it took years, and it started very organic. Mm. As kind of like, a, it actually started back in Lucasfilm because the head of the animation department of the, a big art school here came, and asked like, like, hey, like we need some people. We want we want industry people to teach, um, our students like hands-on skills. Mm -hmm. Like he, he his background is like in Disney animation. Um, and, and he knows the value of, of people actually working on these projects and what they can bring to the table from the other purely full-time teachers. So yeah, 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 me, yeah. I'm like, I'm like six months on the job in my first concept design job. And I'm like, Hey, I'm teaching. Right. So full yeah, of yeah, shit. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and he was like, he probably was like looking at me. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Like, okay, I, I'll take you. I don't have anybody else, so you'll come yeah, or whatever, yeah. right? So uh, that's how I started, like doing like one-off, like um, weekend classes at that school. And again, that was like seven years ago, and it took many, many, many years before. You know, I, I still remember um, uh, when Gumroad first came out. Yeah. You were one of the first yeah. people to jump on that train because I actually asked you. I was yeah. like. Hey, you know this Gumroad thing? You're like, yeah, I'm already recording yeah, a video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? The? Yeah, I did like one or two, and then I totally fell off the. Then I yeah, then I got then busy with other back. shit. Yeah, and then you know because mm. what I you know I just want to say that I, I really, um, your Gumroads really resonated with me because uh, I really like the fact that you took that photography. Uh, that I'm sure you've been you know keeping. Oh up, yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, and 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 you really applied a lot of that into mm. your you know into your gumroad because in the gumroad you could see a cool image and how you made that exactly right uh, i mean i actually you know i i have them so i oh thank I you mean, i i know what I, I i know what i'm talking about because i i actually went through them um because i'm always about learning you know right. you at any stage but when you got to that, you know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's, at some point again, it was like, "What's next?" And the teaching kind of ended up like, mm -hmm. "I can do this kind of teaching, kind of different kinds of teaching." I did like a course with Learn Squared, and then mm -hmm. I was like, "Okay, let, let's let's try to 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 do something on my own terms," and it, mm -hmm. it I'm far from done, right? I'm I'm now I'm doing it. This is the beginning. Now I'm doing yeah. a podcast, right? So I'm like, yeah. what? Um, so we'll see where that where that uh, ends up, but yeah, we'll. I think what another big topic I think we wanted to dive into is uh, how with, with all the information with the overload not only like how like how do how do I navigate that as an artist and 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 but also how do I how do I need to approach 
learning because I think learning has changed in a sense that you used to go to a school, you get a curriculum and then you follow that. And then at the end, you're awesome if you're not totally lazy. But now that, um, especially also with like COVID and everything, I don't want to talk about that too much, but like, I think a lot of learning has shifted into, into the, into the home, uh, into the mm -hmm. personal space. But then now it's like, how do I, how do I structure that myself? How do I approach that? How do I know which content to listen to? Because with the schools, you get the benefit of like a hopefully accredited system and vetted teachers. But it, once, once the bar all barriers are removed, you get, you get just the barrage of everything. And it's like really hard to tell what is good content, what is bad content. Um, and it, I think it would be helpful to, to, to look at, okay, how, how do I learn? Like, how, how can I, how, how do I get the most out of these tutorials and how I can, um, like, get the most out of, out of, out of my time, right? Because l how, to, how to learn and what to learn is going to be uh, very crucial, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you, know, you know, exactly. I mean, what to learn, how to learn. Uh, you know, just what you were saying also how to be as a person, you know, mm. like in terms of like when you go interview uh, a lot of this stuff now, it's not going to be in person. How are exactly. you going to handle that? Uh, what is the industry? A lot of people don't even know. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. a lot of people say, I want to be a concept artist. And do you really know what that means? Yeah. Because there's so many facets now. Exactly. Like, I mean, you've done the theme park stuff. Mm. I've done the theme park stuff live action, film, animation, exactly. there's, uh, you know, magic cards, there's illustration, there's so many things. How do you, yeah. you know, what's, what's the skills needed in each one? Yeah. People you say know? like, I mean, yeah, people say like, I want to be a concept artist or like, I want to work on games yeah. and movies, but like, like, yeah, like what yeah, is that part? Mean? Even in movies, there's multiple, exactly, right? uh, you know, you can be VFX, you can be pre-production, post-production, exactly. This you know, there's so many things. How do you deal with, you know, burning out? You know, that's yeah, a big that's question stuff, I always ask. I mean, how, you know, what do you do? You know, personal work. What, yeah. what does that mean? How, how, Software. Yeah. That's a big one. I think the main thing, I feel like almost like it's, 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 it's not that difficult anymore to, to land a job on a, on a movie, right? If you see like, like these days, there's like hundreds of concept artists even attached to one yeah, big I don't know film. because I, I gotta be honest with you you know like yes you may be able to land a, a, a job at a movie in some capacity yeah. but if you want to get to some of that juicy stuff yeah. which is pre-production yeah it's still really difficult oh, yeah you know I mean I, I I have been working years in it and I still have to fight for it exactly and it's not easy but I also think that it doesn't need to be that hard like you know if yeah. only more people knew exactly you know? yeah and um, but that comes down to like um, I think maybe some people like they feel like um, they're not getting anywhere and like they start off with like a small role and and it people are I think now expecting a lot more a lot quicker and they don't they don't necessarily um, want to put in the years it takes to become really good and get get like uh, like first choice for those projects and I think then it comes down to how 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 do you stay motivated how do you yeah like you said how do you burn out how do you balance um the need for i mean how do you balance uh, owning your skill set to to serve the clients how do you maintain enough income yeah. to allow yourself a bit of flexibility um yeah i mean you know this is one of the uh, one thing that broke my heart a lot was uh, and and you know this is obviously for people of any age yeah but for me, I'm a little bit older, mm. so I'm always, you know, I see a lot of my friends who tell me, hey, you know, I really wish I was a game designer, um, but, well, too bad, you know, I'm a car salesman and that's all I can be. Mm. And this is a true story. Yeah. I mean, it's like there's nothing wrong with selling cars, oh, but no, nothing at all, yeah. if your dream is to game design mm. and you can't do that because you feel like you have a family, yeah. I want people to know that you can learn anything at any time yeah but more importantly you know you can learn this industry you can yeah. be in this if you yeah. are older you know oh definitely of yeah. course if you're 20 years old i mean i still get 20 years old people asking me am i too old yeah uh, because i'm 20 and i'm like are you crazy <laughs> what the hell but i mean you know 
everybody feels like they're too old. Yeah, of course. They, they missed the boat, you know, and it's not it's it's really not that. It's really how much effort exactly you're exactly. willing to put in. Exactly, that. the effort will be rewarded. And, and it has to be targeted effort, right? They can't yeah, just be exactly. like, and the I mean drawing circles every day is not gonna get you there, yeah. right? I mean I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna tell like outright like a like a 40 year old um like okay let's say carl car salesman that has never really touched any art supplies or whatever and he has like uh, two kids and 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 a wife and i don't know a sick dog and i don't want to tell him just like yeah you can do it because i think that's really irresponsible um i think the older you get like you said the more targeted and the more realistic your effort needs to be um, if you're 20, you can just fuck around for another five, six years and it wouldn't make any difference. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I yeah. agree to a certain extent. You don't want to f set false expectations. Exactly. But I got to say that, you know, so I started at 40 playing table tennis because I always wanted to be an Olympian. Right, right, right. And I, I sucked. I mean, I was not, I am not particularly mm. talented. But it took me over seven years to make the, the U.S. team wow. from not knowing how to play. So it's doable if you're willing to put in that yeah, work. Exactly, but exactly. at 40, though, when I was going through this frustrating process, you know, I'm already an adult, mm. right? I'm going, OK, I, I'm first of all, I'm not learning as fast. Mm, exactly. Uh, number two, I'm not as physically adapt as they yeah. are. Uh, but you know what? Um, I'm older, so I should have more experience. Exactly. So I use that to my advantage, and I read all the books about learning. Exactly. I read all the books about how to don't just cut out the the the, mm. the steps, mm. you know, and and make the most important thing um, work for you. And I think that that's what we can really give them mm. um, is way more focused way of learning something or at least our opinions of what that is right uh and then you can kind of take a look from that point of view instead of this you know and and i'm not trying to say like anybody can do anything right. just you know quit your job and <laughs> you have no food for the family <laughs> yeah. but at the same time at some point you know what you know you keep waiting and life will pass you by and regret is just not a good thing to live with so yeah. i'm always the kind of guy that's going to be like you can do this providing you do it with, you know, with yeah. the right, yeah. you know, thinking. No, oh, I think that's, you know? that's good. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be, take care of that sick dog too. Yeah. yeah <laughs> be poor dog, really. <laughs> yeah. So why does that dog have to be sick? Exactly. <laughs> Hospital bills are going to kill you. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we, we are going to, you know, this is just a beginning to sort of get to know who we are and why we're doing this. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, we're open to feedback in terms of like, well, what you want to hear. Um, I don't think there's anything that's off limits. I mean, we do have a set of things that we're exactly. thinking. Uh, but if there is feedback, you can always leave it in the comments. Exactly. And, uh, you know, you, you'll have all our, uh, you know, social media stuff so you can let us know because, you know, it's again, this is really doing it uh, for you, for everyone out there. I mean, exactly. That's, that's how that's why we're doing this to to make sure that it's just pull the curtain back and here's what it is. And and if nothing else, we're going to be really honest. <laughs> if nothing else, if you want it or not, we're going to be honest. Yeah. I mean, you come here for honesty, right? Exactly. I mean, you know. I'm, I'm not a comedian. I'm not going to entertain the way <laughs> some people do, but I, I can tell you the truth. Um, and you can take with it, you know, what, what, what you can. Exactly. So, and I know you're honest too, so <laughs> you're going to get it. Yeah. People don't like that sometimes. Um, yeah, and we'll do, <clears throat> I think we're thinking of doing some portfolio review sometimes yeah, maybe too, too, bringing in some guests, you oh, know, yeah. like I said, we're open. I think everything yeah. will be very, um, each episode, we're trying to have as much of a focus on a, on a particular topic um, so that you can really get the most out of like it, you, it's not going to be like you don't know what to expect with this episode. It's going to be a very clear focus, I think, for every episode. And we'll bring oh, in yes. people when we feel like this is an expert that has something to say, something special to say on that matter. Um, and because you're going to be tired of listening only to us, too, anyway. So, um, yeah, I think 
that will be it for the first episode. Um, I think that was a good overview. And uh, for all of you, please uh, like and subscribe and leave us a comment. If you have any uh, ideas, yeah, like Emmanuel said, drop us a comment or you can also email us at uh, artdepartmentpodcast.gmail.com. Um, everything, our profiles are linked below. So um, I hope this was useful. And, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, hopefully this is the beginning of something great. <laughs> yes, and you'll be part yeah. of it. All of you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See you guys. All right. All right.